Welcome back to the world's worst fishing everybody. I'm Chris Jones. Thank you so much for being here today Taking time out of your schedule to watch us make some fishing lures um, So I was thinking about it Probably I don't know two weeks ago or so two or three weeks and I was sitting around and I was going, you know, I want to practice more on the airbrush but I just don't have a lot of stuff to practice with. I have not gone out and purchased crankbait blanks, swimbait blanks, and I just don't make enough wooden lures. Um, I just, that takes a lot of time out of my schedule, and I, I just, I don't always get enough time to really put in the effort I think needed, especially to advance with wooden lure making. So I'm just not doing it enough, therefore I'm not airbrushing enough, right? So how can I get more practice airbrushing? Because I wanna utilize it um, for, birds are chirping, for a lot of different things. And I said, well, I'll grab a mold that I think will look good for airbrush soft plastics. And you know, because I can make a soft plastic much faster, that will give me more opportunity to practice spraying with the airbrush. So that's what today is. Today is like, Let's learn airbrushing soft plastics. Um, I've only practiced with this mold one time. Uh, I bought this mold just for this, sort of. Um, so I think it's, uh, I, I think it's gonna be kind of a fun learning process. You know, there again, I don't have much practice with this stuff. I don't have much practice airbrushing in general, uh, but I think we can get something that looks decent. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about what we have and, uh, and then we're gonna get started. All right, so we have a few things laid out here. We have our dead on plastics, of course, and this is like a full body bluegill mold and it has like a little weighted insert. Uh, so I went with a firm blend. This is the craw tube blend. Um, I just, I didn't want to go softer because this is not a bait, especially if I'm going to go to the trouble of airbrushing it. I don't want it to just tear up. And then I have some white pearl and some white pigment. Okay. Um, we're basically just going to make a base white pearl bait. Okay. So the same way a lot of wooden lures get a base coat of white or white pearl that then the color is built on top of, that's how we're gonna inject this. And this little guy, check that out. It's a little full body, little full body bluegill. And uh, you can tell right from the scaly pattern, this is a Bob's Tackle Shack mold. And uh, I, I've had my eye on this for a long time. I just didn't really have a purpose to get it. And now I kind of do because something like this that you know has all the full body fin features and things like that, I think it's best airbrushed. Now, of course, you could you know, laminate this, you could triple inject it, you could get some amazing colors just injecting, but for me to pull the trigger on it, I was like, yeah, this is gonna be an airbrush thing. And uh, you see this little weighted insert here. <clears throat> that is how you establish the line through option is literally the plastic injects around this little rod. The, the insert is, is uh, held within the bait, of course. And then once you slide the rod out of the bait, you now have a hollow section to rig the bait line through. Um, so this is something that you see often in BTS molds. <clears throat> it's a little four inch brim. I think we can airbrush some cool stuff with it. So what we're gonna do uh, is we're gonna cook up our dead on plastics here run some white baits. We'll probably just make two of them because uh, I'm sure I'll mess up. So we'll have two ch chances to get a good looking bait. All right, so you don't need much white, okay? It's kind of like, it's kind of like using black. Um, it just takes over. So you want to use these things sparingly. Uh, that's just my opinion. So we'll do four drops of white. All right. Looking good. And we're gonna mix that with a little bit of white pearl powder. Let's scoot the camera over slightly. Let me find my spoon. I never have the spoons ready, I swear. I like a little bit of pearl base. All right. So that right there is all we're doing. We're not adding any flake, we're not adding any color. We are going to spit out a white pearl bluegill. Okay, so this is a very thick bait, so it actually takes a few minutes before you can pour it out of the mold. Um, that's just kind of the a byproduct of the shape of this thing. So we're just gonna inject slowly 
and hold a little bit of pressure because a thick bait like that does draw in a lot of plastic. So we're gonna hold some pressure and then we're really going to want to top that sprue off because it's gonna drink. All right, and there you have it. So about five minutes from now, we'll be able to demold, I think, successfully. All right, let's check it out, you guys. Yeah, pretty cool. Isn't that neat? You can kind of see that insert in there a little bit. And uh, for how, um, how much detail there is on this, uh, the mold seems to, seems to fill in pretty well. So, but you can see, you know, that's pretty thick. That's all plastic. Yeah, you really have to let it set up before you can demold it because that will just be gooey as all get out. But uh, yeah, there it is. That's the base of what we're gonna be doing. And check this out. I think it, I think it comes out this way. There's only one way it can come out, yeah. So you take that rod out and now that weighted insert is still in the front. So now the bait has a little bit of weight in it and you can see that hole there goes all the way through. Makes for easy line through rigging. Okay, so we're done with the uh, mold. And um, just one thing I'll say real quick, <clears throat> if you have this mold at home or, uh, or, or if you wanna get this mold or something like this, being that it's such a, a big bait, there's a lot of mass of plastic in there that has to cool down. Um, it is subject, I think, to more denting than probably a similar mold in a smaller shape. Just because you have so much plastic that, that has to cool, it's going to draw in so much. Uh, so what I would recommend is preheating the mold and then injecting it very hot, hold some pressure, make sure the top off uh, the opening, and that should mitigate those problems. All right, so let's talk about painting soft plastics. Uh, you're going to want a paint that's actually made for soft plastics. And you have this SB coat here, this solvent-based stuff uh, from Lureworks. This is readily made for airbrushing soft plastics. It does not need to be sealed or clear dipped or anything like that, although we are going to run a clear coat of it over that just to make the colors pop. Um, but you can pretty much just spray this stuff right on a bait and it dries within seconds uh, and it's good to go. Um, they say that these are airbrush ready. However, the lie detector test determined that was a lie, <laughs> at least with my airbrush right here. You know, I've just got a, a beginner, a Neo. Um, I recommend using thinner, okay? Thinner and retarder based on what you need, uh, and, or sorry, what your needs are, the conditions that you're painting in, uh, if you're painting in humid conditions and the paint starts to get this little spider web effect, uh, you need to mix in some of that. Okay, so basically I just took, uh, and I, I, I bought these little stands from Lureworks, and I basically have just pinned the bait up on there, and that way we can then take our airbrush, and we can basically just free paint it just like that. Um, now we're gonna do everything freehand. I don't have like any stencils pre-built, uh, not yet. I might do some of that eventually, um, but we're just gonna start um, trying to put a bluegill pattern down. So, here we go. Okay, so I have some orange mixed up, and we're just gonna paint some little orange bellies on our little bluegills here. So, here we go. Real light. Real little orange belly there. Yeah. Just like that. Now we're gonna get the other side. Yeah, we'll stop there. Just a little orange accent on the belly. And one thing I'll say about these paints, really, really got to shake them or mix them well before each use, and the fumes will knock you out. Make sure you are ventilating well and uh, wear a mask. If, uh, if you're in an enclosed area, this stuff will make your head hurt. Um, so really, really put emphasis on safety um, 
in terms of ventilation whenever you're using this stuff. So now we're just gonna put down a green pumpkin base pretty much all over the bait, except for maybe the very bottom, and then we're gonna build some color from there. So green pumpkin 3015 is next. All right, here we go. We have our green pumpkin loaded in. And let's, uh, let's start getting it on there. Yeah, beautiful. You can see it's a little uneven. Okay. Don't always know what I'm doing here. That's okay though. We're also gonna get the tail portion. All of this. I tell you, I have tried this without the thinner. You must have it in my opinion to get this stuff to really go on well. And the tails are gonna be darker. I will say that. We're gonna actually accent the tails with some black. Okay. Well, that's kind of how we're going to start uh, the sides of these. Uh, so now we're going to flip this around. Yeah, I really like that color. And you can see I got a little... Oh, that's the stand. Okay. Thought I had a little boo-boo there. All right. Let's get this side going. Okay, so here's what I have so far, and uh, I, I like it. Once we get uh, some black on there and, and a few other accent colors, uh, I think those will actually look like little bluegills. So now I'm gonna put some color sort of here in the gill plate area. I'm thinking sort of like a purple effect, something like that. So yeah, I'm gonna try to mix up some purple. All right, and here's my very bar, barbaric way of loading this. So here's how the paints come, okay? They, they just come in these little miniature paint cans and it's really hard to just pour out of that. So I'm literally just dipping with my measuring spoons like I normally would. I'm just dipping out the color and dipping out the thinner. And then of course, you can mix another color in there uh, if you wanna darken it, lighten it, add a different hue to it. Um, so we might mix a little bit of blue in there. But anyway, that's how I'm at least loading it into the uh, airbrush and then I'm stirring it. I already had the thinner in there. And so that right there is sort of how we're going about things. All right, so this part may make these look bad. I'm not sure, um, but we're gonna try it anyway. I'm just gonna accent that gill plate with some of this purple. If I can get it without knocking the whole thing over here. And so I just wanna do it just kinda lightly. Just a little bit of purple there. Yeah, you can see the purple starting to come on. You know, because a lot of bluegills have purples in them. You know, we could even accent some of this down here with a little bit of purple. There's really no wrong place to put purple on a, a brim, in my opinion. Um, so, you know, that's kind of what we're gonna start with right there. It's just kind of filling in some of these gaps with purple. You know, like I said, a lot of bluegill, man. Do the purple thing. I have my PSI really low. Just trying to avoid splattering. <laughs> yeah. Super fun though. Enjoying myself with this. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's looking very natural bluegill to me. All right, now we're gonna give some color uh, to these bottom fins here and then sort of up front a little bit 
And what I did is I mixed Carolina pumpkin with black, okay? So this is gonna be sort of like a darker brown. Okay, so let's see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, give it a little bit of accent there. And maybe up here in the head, just to kind of darken some of the areas where we didn't get a whole lot of uh, the original green pumpkin. And then we're gonna go over this with black again later. But just to kind of give these things a little bit of uh, character, so to speak. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of digging that. All right, we'll do it to the other side real fast. Let's get that fin. You know, again, since I'm not, you know, an advanced painter, of course, as evidenced, you know, I, I'm just trying to overcome that by using natural tones that will make a natural pattern. Nothing fancy here. You're not going to see any uh, TJ Hatfield tricks just yet, but I'm coming for you, buddy. Um, no, seriously, I'd, that would require years of practice, but hey, we've got time. Okay, so I think I'm gonna accent those fins with the uh, same brown Carolina pumpkin. So I'm just gonna kinda lay that. I'm not sure how I can do this on camera. But I'm just gonna kinda lay that there and just give it a light little misting. and just hope that that's just kind of a faint little accent. Yeah, something like that, exactly. Okay, everyone, here's where it's gonna get tricky. Um, now we're gonna do our striping and accents with black. Um, freehand, which we, we did it before when, when we practiced. So uh, we're gonna try to do it again. So anyway, I have my black uh, mixed up there. And uh, now we just want to do our bluegill lines, so to speak. So we want to get it real close, but also faint. Yeah. Just kind of start doing the striping that you see on a brim. Yeah, just a little something like that. There you go. Pretty cool. And not half bad. And then now I want to accent the fins. So we're going to just do the edges of the fins there. Yeah, to me that already makes like a huge difference. We're going to do it up here as well. a light little accent along the top of those fins. Doesn't that look cool? It just kind of sets it off. I don't know. I mean, you know, this is my second time doing this and I'm just going on what I think a brim should look like. You know, and then we might uh, shade around the eyes a little bit. In fact, I think we, in fact, I think we will we'll shade around the eyes. It's something you kind of see pretty common. Yeah. Yeah, I think that dog right there will hunt. Sweet. All right. Now let's see if we can do that to the other side without <laughs> without completely ruining it. Definitely think I did the first one a little bit better. But uh, that's starting to look like a real paint job. What do y'all think so far? I'm loving it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the other side real fast now off camera and uh, decide if we wanna add any other colors while we're at it. 
Okay, while I have uh, my black still in the airbrush, uh, I went ahead and decided I'm gonna also do a little bit of black accenting there on the bottom, okay, of the tail. So just something real simple. Just like that. And then I also wanna do the edge of that bottom fin in black, real lightly. Yeah, see the difference that made? I'm digging it. So, you know, that little stuff like that, I think is, is why you use the airbrush. You know, it would be impossible pretty much to pour that. So, you know, I just figure, well, while well, I got the airbrush out, let's place color in places that I'm not used to, to doing. So that is sort of the idea. Okay, I chose to go with just a natural eye, nothing crazy. This is the fish skull living earth eye. And you can see it's just a very kind of natural earthy tone. I, I guess that's the best way to put it. Um, and I think it just kind of fits nicely and complements the, the bait. I didn't, I, I looked at some of my more crazy eyes and I thought, nah, this is such a tra traditional paint scheme. We'll just go with the most basic looking eye that I think will complement the bait. All right, here we go. Let's see if we can get one of these two clear coats. See what happens here. Yeah, you can see how shiny it got there. Yeah. Yeah, looking pretty good. Yeah, see that gloss that it brought to it? That's pretty cool. I don't know if you're supposed to clear coat the whole thing, but that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go uh, to the other side. Same process. We're just gonna go, gonna go ham on it. There we go. Man, look at how it just pops. Yeah, I'm a big fan. All right, y'all, here's a few close-up glamour shots. I'm digging it. I will say, you can kind of see that little line. That's actually a cold crack line. You know, a bait that's this big, you can get cold cracks with injection. So again, kind of like I was speaking to earlier, it's probably a good idea uh, to preheat this mold a little bit. Yeah, you can see a few there, but that's extreme nitpicking. You know, if I was gonna do one extra step, I would darken the top right in here. I think that's missing a little bit of, uh, of color there, but uh, wow. I'm really happy with these. Second time ever airbrushing a plastic, and uh, I think they look incredibly natural and real. So I would have all the confidence in the world throwing one of those. Um, real quick, let me show you how, uh, how these are designed to be rigged. Okay, and these are meant to be rigged line through, if I can get my hook unstuck here. Uh, most of the time using a treble hook, so you just feed the line back through the bait, okay? And there you go, you know, you can pull it tight, that'll kind of sink that hook in that slot, so to speak. And a lot of people, what they like to do is they'll bury, you know, one part of the hook into the bait I'm not going to bury it completely, but basically now you have a line through bait. That is the idea. And what's neat about the little insert is that you already have internal weight. And of course, I would be morally remiss if I did not show you a few recent hand pours. And uh, I really like this one. It's sort of a chartreuse gill. And I kind of, um, whenever I was building this color, I, was, I had that eyeball in mind. That's a Jetson Lure crappy eye. And uh, you can see it kind of fits the theme of the bait. And you know, this, this is where my real passion lies, is being able to pour patterns that blend colors and smooth gradients to make them look natural. You know, so kind of here's, the, here's the, two, the two worlds, so to speak. You know, poured versus painted. Obviously, you can do a much better job painting than this. This is still very basic and elementary, but that's kind of the two I guess options you have 
with soft plastics when it comes to really wanting to place color precisely to get a pattern. I was looking at, uh, at the footage just now and realized I forgot to put on my wedding ring today, so I went and put it on. All right, that was super fun. I uh, appreciate you guys watching, guys and gals. Um, don't want to leave anyone out, but um, yeah, again, that was super fun. And I think sort of, like I mentioned, the goal was uh, practice on the airbrush. You know, I doubt I'll just make a ton of those baits, um, but there'll be a good template uh, to practice my airbrushing. And, you know, the goal, of course, is to improve upon that so that, you know, whenever I do make another wood lure or if I want to paint a crankbait blank, I'll be a little bit more prepared. I'll have a little bit more experience, even though it's a different kind of paint. Um, you know, I, I think ultimately it's also the same. So uh, that will uh, give me some inspiration to keep practicing. And uh, you know, we'll probably start also applying the airbrush to some of our hand pours to add little accents after it comes out of the mold. You know, so we'll be doing a lot more airbrushing soft plastics. Um, so be on the lookout for some of that. But uh, anyway, thanks everyone for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed. Please leave me comments down below. Let me know how you thought we did. And uh, we'll catch you next time.